Hello and welcome to a new session in which we cover and finish chapter one, waves. In this chapter, in this session, in fact, we focus mainly on the relative vibration between points affected by the same wave. The main points in this chapter are two. First, we're gonna define what wave fronts and wave rays are. Then we go to relative vibration in which we compare motions, as we have mentioned before. We will study this in one dimension and two dimensions. But before we do that, let's watch uh, this simulation together and focus on some basic points that we might need. The simulation that we're gonna talk about is wave interference which we extract from FET. Now, opening the FET uh, simulation, we have this simulation is about interference. We just need to focus on the term waves because that's what we're gonna study. If I go to regular waves, you notice that I can choose many sources. I will choose one. Turning the tap on, so you notice some drops of water will start, start appearing. After a while, I'm gonna pause that. Now, these blue lines, which we will know are ripples, serve as what we call wave fronts. Now, if you imagine virtual lines going along the radii here, we call these wave rays. Wave rays usually indicate the direction of propagation of the waves themselves. Now, if I choose this and I'll move the barrier away, moving the barrier, you know what? We can put this barrier away or simply here, no barrier. So this source here that you can see to the left side serves as a producer or a source of waves. So if I press on it, you notice that I will generate like waves following each other. I paused it. These waves are referred to as plane waves. The lines which you can see in blue are a plane wave fronts. Lines, imagine some virtual lines perpendicular to these, they serve as wave rays. That's it concerning this part. Based on the simulation that we have worked with, we can sum up our ideas into two main points. First, defining a wave front, which is an imaginary line that joins all points reached by a wave at the same instant. Take, for example, C waves. Okay, which serve as a good example for plane wave fronts. Ripples produced by dropping stones in water serve as uh, circular wave fronts. We have seen these two examples in the previous simulation. A wave ray, on the other hand, is simply a virtual line as well, which is perpendicular to the wave fronts, and the wave ray serves as the direction of propagation of the wave, or it serves as an indicator of the direction of propagation. Looking at the figures that you can see to the right, where we have these plane wave fronts, and it's worth noticing that the distance between two consecutive fronts is nothing but the wavelength, and the wave ray, this one here, which is perpendicular to the wave, uh, to the wave fronts. While if you go to the circular waves, you notice that the distance between two consecutive circles is the wavelength lambda. Now, the second part is relative vibrations. Before we go to relative vibrations, let's discuss a bit some ideas that we know. If you look at the figure that you can see to the right, the video, you notice that the red dots just move up and down when the wave moves sideways to the right side. Now, if we pause this a bit, you notice that the, two, the first two points move continuously in opposition. One goes up, the other goes down while the other two points move together. They move up together and down together. Now, comparing the motions of particles is what we call the relative vibration. Some basic points we need to keep in mind before we start with the relative vibration and the mathematical rules that we might need. Points in the same medium and affected by the same wave vibrate continuously. We all know this fact. So these points will not stop. Even if we draw a figure where they are at rest, that's just a figure. Their vibrations may be alike, 
in opposition or just random one moves up the other moves with it after some time one will be moving down the other continues moving up that is random vibration or motion relative vibration of points refers to the comparison of motions of these points okay and always keep in mind in relative vibration we compare the motion or the motions of two or more points affected by the same wave in this simulation we have a circular wave let us start with the in phase vibration case two points are set to vibrate in phase when they behave alike they vibrate in the same manner always two important things you have to keep in mind here first that points should be behaving alike second always with time so in order to be in phase the points should be moving up together down together right together left together but always not they start like each other first then after a while they change if that's the case we cannot say they vibrate in phase if you look at the figure to the right side you notice that there is a juggler throwing balls the balls are given to move up simultaneously at the same time and together and they move down also together so these two balls are said to be juggled or to vibrate in phase now going to the mathematical representation of in phase two points are said to be in phase if they move alike you will notice that the distance between points vibrating alike for example these red dots the distance between them is one lambda and two lambdas so if we generate this or generalize this idea, we can say that two points oscillating along the same direction of wave vibrate in phase when the distance separating these two points is a whole multiple of lambdas. Mathematically speaking, D equals K times lambda, where K is a whole number. Now K can be zero, it can be one, it can be any value. But when it comes to zero, we know that the points are going to be confounded. When it comes to k equal to one, we will have the minimal distance between two points vibrating alike. So that's it concerning the uh, in phase vibration. Now we move to the in opposition vibration. Two points are said to vibrate in opposite phase or anti phase, which is in opposition when they behave in opposition always they move in opposite directions always keep in mind that the idea of having that all the time is very important the same juggler now juggling the same balls but now we are given that as the red ball moves up the blue one moves down as as the red ball moves down the blue one moves up these two juggling balls are said to be in opposition mathematically speaking it is important to memorize this. Two points vibrate in opposition when the distance between them is a whole number and a half of lambdas. If you look at the figure here, the red dots are in opposition with the blue. The distance between these two is lambda over two. Over here, it is three lambda over two. Instead of saying lambda over two, I can say zero, plus lambda over 2. Here I can say lambda plus lambda over 2. Over here we have 5 over 2 lambda or simply 2 lambdas and a half. So some people tend to use a number over the 2 or for example 2 if you take this number here and convert it you might have some different form. What I like to mention is that d equals k lambda stands for in phase so doing something similar to it, instead of introducing new ideas, when D is K plus half lambda, the points are said to be in opposition. Okay? Now, concerning some notes about relative vibration, first what I just told you about, when two points vibrate in opposition, we said that D equals K plus half lambda, right? If we take two common as a common denominator, we get 2K plus 1 over 2 to k plus 1 lambda taking the over 2 here so we get this in some books you might notice that this is written two points vibrate in opposition 
if the distance between them is 2k plus 1 lambda over 2 or an odd number of lambda over 2. It's not wrong. However, I do not, I do not support this method. I prefer to compare to lambda always. How is that? A quick method to compare motions of two points mathematically is to calculate the ratio d over lambda, where d is the distance between the two points. If d over lambda is a whole number, k, then the points are said to be in phase, for obvious reasons, because d will be then k lambda. On the other hand, if d over lambda is a whole number and a half, which is k 1.5, 2.5, k.5, or plus half, because k.5 isn't accepted, the points are said to be in opposition. Note that if it's neither this nor that, then the points vibrate randomly. Go now to an application in which we focus on what we have covered so far. A vibrator of frequency 20 hertz produces vibrations at a point S of a surface liquid, of a liquid. Circular wave fronts propagate on the surface at a speed of 40 centimeters per second. Now, calculate the wavelength. Then, mechanical waves can be classified as longitudinal or transverse. Specify the type of the waves produced on the surface of this liquid. Compare the vibratory state of S to that of point M and then point N. Vibratory state is simply the comparison of the relative motion or vibration. So let's solve these uh, parts. One and two are uh, trivial. Three is something new. In order to calculate the wavelength, we go to the equation of speed. V equals lambda f, then lambda is v over f. I think you don't have any problem with that. However, just focus on the units. This is in centimeter per second. That's why the unit here is centimeters. I'm going to choose green color because I think it would appear be more evident. Two specify to which uh, type of waves does the wave propagating on the liquid surface belong. We have defined both waves. Transverse waves displace particles in a direction perpendicular to the propagation of wave, whereas longitudinal displace particles in direction parallel. Over here, since we are dealing with uh, liquid um, waves or waves on the surface of a liquid, we know that the particles of the liquid will displace perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave. So this wave here is trans. Now moving to the real deal in which we compare motions. We said that in order to compare motions, in order to compare the vibratory state, we find the distance between the two points and compare that to lambda. D over lambda is here SM over lambda, which is 13 centimeters over 2 centimeters equals 6.5. This is a whole number and a half. So if I proceed, SM is 6 plus half lambda, which is similar to K plus half lambda. So what can I say about S and M? They vibrate in opposition. In the second scenario, the distance is 10. Dividing by lambda, we get 5. So this is similar to 5 lambda, in which or K lambda, in which S and M vibrate in phase. OK, this is as simple as that. Another application on the ideas that we have covered so far is this exercise in which we have a wave propagating from left to right and uh, produced at the end of a rope. We are also given some points on that rope, A through G. First, we need to choose points such that we have three different scenarios. A, it is the closest the point that vibrates in opposite phase with A. B, it vibrates in phase with C. and Part C, it vibrates neither in phase nor in opposition with point B. Then, the elongation at po of point C is given to be 2 centimeters. What are the elongations of the other points E and G at the same instant? So, we need to find out the displacements of each of points E and G depending on C. Point B needs 0 0.4 seconds to complete one vibration and the distance between B and F is 4 centimeters. Determine the speed of the wave. Starting with part 1A, we need to find a point that vibrates in opposition to A, and it should be the closest point to A as well. 
The answer is C. Simply since AC is lambda over 2. You might ask why. Simply we know that to be in opposition, the distance should be K plus half, right? Now, to be the closest, then K should be the least. And the least corresponds to K equal to 0. Thus, D equals to half lambda. If you notice, A is the starting point. The, the, a point which is away from A, half a wavelength is C. The second part, the closest, but to be in uh, phase with point C, we notice that the answer is point G, because CG equals 1 lambda for the same reasons. Uh, to be in phase D is K lambda. The least distance corresponds to K equal to 1. Why not 0? Because if the distance is 0, that means that the points are the same. They are not distinct points. A point being neither in phase nor in opposition should be any number in between a whole number of lambdas and a whole number and a half. I've chosen here a point away from point B, a distance lambda over 4. You'll notice that the points will either be A or C. Now, to draw that, this is my wave. Point B is here. If I choose either A or B or C, both will work. Why? If I continue drawing the figure, you know that right now A is going to move down because the part preceding it is down. A is gonna, B is going to move down. So A and B start to be in phase. Okay? If you wait a bit, B will reach this point here. A will reach the crest. Now A starts moving down and B is moving down as well. So A and B started to be in opposition and ended up to be in phase. That's why they are neither this nor that. Now, given the displacement of point E to be, uh, of point C, sorry, to be uh, 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 at an elongation of plus two centimeters, E and C are in opposition. Therefore, if, e, if C moves up two centimeters, E would be moving down two centimeters. C and G are in phase, on the other hand. So if, e, uh, if C is away from the axis as plus two, so should G be. Finally, moving to part three, uh, in which we have a point B needs 0 0.4 seconds to complete one vibration, and the distance between points B and F is also B. Now I have uh, redrawn the figure on this slide so that we can use the, what, the given data effectively. The question is to determine the speed. We all know that to find speed, we need two things. P equals lambda F, so we need the wavelength and we need frequency or period. If we go to the given data, B needs 0 0.4 seconds to complete one vibration. That means if B is here, needs to move down, then back up, okay? I'm scribbling, in fact. It needs 0 0.4. That defines one period. Now, the distance from B to F, or the space between uh, B and F, is uh, simple. Since the given is distance, that's great. The distance between two consecutive crests is nothing but the wavelength. So we can directly go and write. Period is the duration to complete one cycle, so the period is 0 0.4 seconds. Okay? The distance between two consecutive crests is wavelength. Therefore, BF represents one wavelength, which is 4 centimeters according to it. Now, to use the equation V equals lambda F or V equals lambda over T, 4 over 0 0.4, thus it is 10 centimeters per second. Now, some of you might ask, should we write this in SI units? Well, no. As long as the question doesn't demand any specific unit, feel free to use any unit that you prefer. That's it concerning this application. Okay. Uh, I think by this we have finished everything concerning the chapter as the ideas that we need to know. As an ending, I have chosen what's known as the dancing pendulums. If you are at home now, try to produce this experiment. First, you might need the equation to calculate the period of oscillation of a pendulum, of a simple pendulum. I want to give you that. If you're interested, you can go and search on the internet. You can find that. The dancing pendulums is a system made up of 15 pendula, each of unique length. The longest one can perform 51 oscillations in 60 seconds. This data can help you find the length that you should choose for the pendulum. 
Each shorter one performs one additional oscillation in 60 seconds. The shortest one executes 65 oscillations in 60 seconds. Now, what you can see here, as the picture shows here, is a certain pattern that we see with the pendula. It's really interesting. Go to the internet, watch things about dancing pendula, and try to produce your own pendulum. Okay, it's something really amazing. Thank you for your time and all that you have to do. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, feel free to post it in the comments whenever you want.